Hello, this is Paul with Logix Training, and today we're going to talk about how good do you have to be to get an entry level PLC programmer's job? Well, that's a very important question that every new PLC programmer really struggles with trying to find the answer for. But what I'm going to share with you today should really take a lot of the mystery out and give you a better perspective of how good you need to be and how to prepare yourself in educating yourself and the skill set that you'll need to be successful with that entry level job. All right. Okay. So let's start with um, the industry. Unlike some industries, this industry is not heavily regulated. Like a nurse, you have to go do nursing school, it takes state boards, then you get your, your license, and then you're, you're working with a medical professional, uh, maybe a, a nurse practitioner and or a doctor, and um, you don't have this really deep organizational um, structure that you work within. There's a lot of training and guidance, and there's some regulation. In the automation and controls field, we don't have that. We, we lack that structure. Um, Sometimes to the to the betterment, but oftentimes um, it's it's challenging for those wanting to break into the career because there's no real guidance. There's no there's no step by step procedure. Um, getting a college degree doesn't guarantee you know a, an easy segue into the industry at all. So so what does a person do? What do they do? What do they look for? What is the barometers? What are the what is the curriculum? What is the 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 path in order to enter the career field? You know, confidently, successfully, knowing that you you've tick marked all the things you need to do, and therefore you're ready for entry. Sort of like you know, I took my I, I studied, I got past my schooling, I took my boards. Now I'm ready to get a job. Okay, then because it's hard enough when you do have the skills to go out there. And 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 apply and fight for an opportunity in the job market that's hard enough especially when you're not sure what you need to know in order to get that first entry level job i hope that makes sense to you and i'm sure it does for those who are who are at that point this is a this is a big struggle it's a real difficult um space headspace to be in and that's really what it is it is headspace it is where are you at in your mindset and we're going to help formulate that a little bit today. Now, there are concrete things that you can do, right? And we're going to talk about those today. Um, It's very important uh, that you do certain things, right? Okay, so let's let's go ahead and dive right into it. Again, if this is your first time here, uh, you want to learn about how to to, uh, make a career jump into automation and or robotics, go ahead, subscribe and hit the bell. All right? And uh, you'll get to see more of me and talk about this this exciting career field. Okay, so let's start with a college degree, because in certain ways that is the that is one of those credentialing uh, path one one more item in the credentialing paths that you could obtain. You could get an electrical engineering or mechanical engineering degree. takes take automation classes while in college and leave with uh, some sort of you know, degree and or certificates um, having left college and um, that could, could really put you in a good position for an entry level position in the automation and controls field. Without a doubt, that is one path. It's a four year path at minimum. If you've got a day job, it could take six, eight or even 10 years to get that degree. But it is one path, and I don't undermine it by any stretch. There's a lot of value with a college experience. Um, And I'll tell you, the first time you have some of your uh, business meetings and um, your your basic math isn't very strong and your writing is not really strong and you you struggle with Excel, you will most certainly uh, appreciate having uh, taken some classes on that. All right, so the, the degree is most certainly one path. Very common, very common path. Uh, at one point, it used to be virtually the only path because we didn't have the internet. You didn't have easy access to software and, and, and um, 
to be able to download for free and play and test and try try it out back in the day. So um, that used to be the only path. Today, there's a lot more opportunity, a lot more different paths, because again, we don't have that, that structure. Um, the second item I want to talk about is credentialing, right? What are the types of credentials that you can get? And there are there are several several of them. Siemens got you know some credentialing. Um, Rockwell's got a lot of credentialing. You can you can spend a lot of time and money with both of these companies and receive uh, lots of credentials. For people to say there's like there is no path, that's not accurate at all. There is a path of credentialing, and using following up Siemens and Rockwell, you will find lots of class and and credentialing that you can obtain. So that is definitely another path, and you can get done a whole lot sooner than in going the co the college education path, and for a whole lot less. So very important um, to look into that, and that's very you know it's a good path, it's a good reliable path. There are many courses that I have taken, and more that I will take from from Rockwell. Um, uh, I think a couple of them just for learning some more, but getting credentialing. I think it's important in your career that you always continually grow, always continually advance your career path, right? And credentialing is one of those items that 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 can help, okay? All right, so another path is having come uh, with experience in maintenance. For example, um, I know guys who have worked with PLCs for decades, uh, you know, not really writing programs, but they've made edits. They do a lot of troubleshooting um, they've worked with prints, um, they've installed sensors and, and all kinds of stuff. They have worked with robotics. They are a great candidate to move into a controls engineer uh, position uh, as an entry level uh, technician. Um, maybe they can't write a program, most of them cannot write a program uh, from scratch. Actually, ones I'm thinking about, there's six of them, um, none of them could write a solid program from scratch, but they are great candidates for an entry level position because they have years of experience in the hardware and, and at least um, um, navigating the software. So they're a great candidate with limited training. They, they can be uh, very quickly put into a controls engineer level one, level two position very easy and be of real value there with their years of experience. So that's that's another path. Um, again, that's a path that could take, you know, three, four, four years and in the right position where you have access to the software, you have access to maybe work with robotics, you have uh, some good training, some good mentors, that could be a very good path. Um, and obviously you'd be getting paid versus paying. So that's, that's an opportunity. But then again, the struggle is finding the right company who would uh, let you, give you that opportunity. And that could be a little bit of, of a struggle. The fourth one that I really want to talk to you about um, is building your own portfolio. The thing about building a portfolio is this. Yes, it's entry level. And yes, a lot of times some of the best entry level material might be a $10 Udemy course. I get that. Um, but you really, that, that's a very good starting point, but I really want you to get you to level up as much as possible, okay? Um, a Udemy course is a great entry level uh, opportunity, but when you're building a professional portfolio, you really want to, to build a really in-depth, high high level uh, PLC program. And some of the things you can do to consider uh, how what that's going to look like is obviously you, uh, you have your IO, uh, you make sure that you, you include routines with faults and bypass and HMI and um, all those types of, you know, more advanced levels. Um, build an HMI program, right? If you can take some classes and spend a little money, get some hardware scanners and sensors and, and lasers to integrate them with the hardware um, into your portfolio. Um, most certainly get an understanding of um, networking. It's a very important uh, part of more advanced level programming. Understand what, uh, 
Well, you know, point IO, for example, um, uh, is and how to network that, how to create a, a numbering scheme, um, understand drives and a couple of different uh, versions of drives, understand how to set those parameters, maybe through the software, through the hardware. Make sure that you um, have multiple types of uh, processors that you've written programs for. Again, what you want to do is have a a template that literally you can put on top of any of the uh, different automation platforms that makes it easier and more efficient for you to write a program and then integrate some different hardware and different applications um, that are unique to uh, to you that that shows that you can think independently um, and instead of a copy and paste uh, course that you can think independently and begin to understand how to integrate different hardware into your project because in the real world that's what it's going to be like and whatever you do don't shortcut spending time in CAD in AutoCAD or whatever the platform you uh, like best because most certainly it's going to be in an entry level it's going to be a very important part of what you do drawing prints all right so I hope some of this this has been helpful for you. Um, I think any of these paths will work for you. Maybe a combination of all of them. In your career, you're going to have a large combination of all the four. No question about it. Um, so uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, this is um, it's Friday. I'm home alone and the sun's out. It's going to be a beautiful day. we got the granddaughters birthday party tomorrow that's exciting it's gonna be a lot of a lot of fun um got a class i'm teaching tomorrow on some programming and as you notice i haven't really done anything with with my new uh, uh workbench here but uh i'll tidy this up some this weekend i spent a little bit of time i think i got some blocks in here this week and that's pretty much about it i had to re-engineer a couple of machines which took a considerable amount of time this week, but we're gonna get back at it and we're gonna we're gonna work on it, right? Okay, so that's it. I just want to share a few thoughts with you uh, on this Friday, this sunny Friday. You guys, I tell you, uh, most certainly get in there, be productive, get in there, put your hour in a day, write some some code, get get comfortable, and then when you leave and you go out and you you play and you have fun with your family, you at least know, man, I really had a game. I really gained because I put that power that hour in. All right. So if you have any questions, put them down in the uh, in the comment section down below. I'd love to help you. All right. So until next time, this is Paul with Logic's Training.